Throughout our journeys in the Pokemon world, we have the wonderful opportunity to see characters fulfill their dreams. Whether it's becoming Pokemon Champion, getting promoted to a member of the Elite Four, or even becoming the world's best Pokemon Chef. The future can be anything in the Pokemon world, but sometimes that future is more of a nightmare than a dream. And if you think Pokemon living their lives inside Pokeballs is rough, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And with that in mind, my name is Blaine for Bridge 4 Games, and this is the top 10 worst fates suffered by people in the Pokemon world. Number 10, N. When looking back at some of the most memorable antagonists in the Pokemon series, N comes to mind for most people. Beginning his life as an orphan and raised by his adoptive father, Getsus, N was surrounded by Pokemon who were mistreated by humans to give him the strong belief that humans and Pokemon couldn't coexist. This became the driving force behind everything N did as he became a more powerful trainer and one of the highest ranking members of Team Plasma. The only problem is, it was all a lie. Getsus wanted Team Plasma to separate everyone from their Pokemon so he could be the only one left with Pokemon and basically used N as his weapon to achieve that goal. Once he's defeated, N learns the truth and decides to still offer Getsus the love and compassion that he once felt from him, only for Getsus to say that he means nothing to him. Even though N would go on to become Pokemon Champion, and have his own Pokemon adventure in the Unova region, he would be doing so all alone, having lost the only person who ever loved him, and knowing everything he had ever learned in life was all a lie. Number 9. Giovanni Giovanni is pretty much the quintessential Pokemon villain. When it comes to bad guys in Pokemon, common pop culture knowledge starts and ends with a man in a suit petting his Persian. And sure, he was the head of a massive criminal empire and wanted for nothing, but that was all before a 10-year-old boy named Red came along. In the span of about a year, Red toppled Team Rocket, foiled all their operations throughout Kanto, and defeated Giovanni on three separate occasions, the last of which was on his home turf, Viridian Gym. This loss was so humiliating that Giovanni would go into hiding to become a stronger trainer, but just three years later, would see the remnants of Team Rocket beaten again before being beaten by yet another 10-year-old trainer. Even when Giovanni uses the Ultra Wormholes of Alola to assemble a team of all the villains in the entire Pokemon franchise, under the banner of Team Rainbow Rocket, he would again experience defeat, losing everything yet again. Giovanni has found himself in a permanent cycle of building up a brand new empire, seeing success, and then having it all smashed to pieces over and over again. Number 8. The Ultra Recon Squad Even though Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon was basically a full-price DLC for Gen 7, the enhanced versions really added a lot of content, including travel to other dimensions through the Ultra Wormholes. Enter the Ultra Recon Squad. Originally coming from Ultra Megalopolis, you know, because Super Awesome Epic Town was taken, the members of the Ultra Recon Squad served the story by showing how powerful Necrozma really is. While it had been massively overlooked in Sun and Moon, we are now told that Necrozma consumed all the light on their world, and Alolo was next. And of course, with the help of the Recon Squad, the day is saved from Ultra Necrozma, but one thing that is not saved is their world. If all the light on the planet is gone, that must mean the sun was consumed. We see everybody living indoors, but on a world with no sun, no crops can grow, which also means no animals, and it's also likely that parts of their world without artificial heat are just frozen wastelands now. Even the Ultra Recon Squad themselves have no skin pigment as a result of living in total darkness. Life on Ultra Megalopolis means no light, no heat, and no hope of that ever changing. I think I'll pass. Number 7, Looker. Employed by the International Police and rocking an outfit worthy of the Doctor, Looker is one of the most famous good guys in the Pokemon universe aside from the player characters themselves. Originally showing up in Pokemon Platinum with the goal of stopping Team Galactic, he would make many more appearances over the years, including in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, trying to contain the Ultra Beasts while teamed up with Nanu and Annabelle. Throughout the story, we learn that Annabelle lost her memory as the result of her falling through an Ultra Wormhole years earlier. And unfortunately, she never got her memories back. And even though Annabelle was able to put her life back together, and even though the day is saved and Alola is spared from the invasion, in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we end up finding Looker washed up on the shore of the Battle Resort with no memory of who he is. While it's never said outright, the clear conclusion is that Looker was continuing his investigation, fell through an Ultra Wormhole himself, and ended up in Hoenn with a nasty case of amnesia. Not only is the former badass now faced with a future in a foreign land with no idea who he is, but all the memories of his victories and accomplishments are gone forever. Number 6. Lusamine Yeah, I know, another one from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but hey, what can I say? These games have a ton of story to them. Anyway, Lusamine is definitely one of the most complex villains in the Pokemon franchise. Originally, Lusamine loved Pokemon and founded the Aether Foundation with the express goal of protecting Pokemon. But her plans would end up changing when she encountered the Ultra Beasts and fell under the influence of Nihilego. 
poisoning her with its toxins. It shifted her love of Pokemon to a love of the Ultra Beasts that would ultimately turn into an obsession. She would end up freezing the Pokemon she once loved in order to use their energy to open up a wormhole to let the Ultra Beasts come through. And in the climax of her own story, she becomes delusional and actually fuses with Nihiligo, attacking everybody, including her beloved daughter Lily. And even though she is beaten and freed from Nihiligo, all the toxins are still within her, with her very last appearance being Lily trying to take her to a doctor to save her life. And even if she lives, she'll be coming home to an Aether Foundation corrupted into doing the exact opposite of what it was designed for. And as if all this wasn't tragic enough, her husband, Moan, went missing years earlier, and even though he was presumed dead, he actually just fell through an ultra wormhole and is perfectly fine, just with no memories whatsoever of Lusamine or their two children. In fact, the only positive thing about Lusamine's story is that it encouraged Lily to go on her own Pokemon adventure. But all that Lusamine has left is the remains of her life that were pretty much all destroyed while she was being used as a puppet. Number 5. Professor Sada and Professor Turo When Professor Sada and Turo were first revealed, Fans were pretty quick to pick up on the fact that one looked like they belonged in the Flintstones and the other one looked like they belonged in Tron. It was pretty easy to figure out that the story of Scarlet and Violet was going to involve a lot of time travel. But instead of using Dialga or Celebi to travel through time, they pulled a Doc Brown and put together their own time machine, with Sada wanting to study the prehistoric Pokemon of the past and Turo wanting to see the robotic Pokemon of the future. And it turns out that their plan actually worked great, except it's pretty much a one-way trip, leaving them trapped in either the past or the future, with the robots taking their place. And this also has the unintended consequence of leaving Arvin without his parents. But somehow, things would get even worse. In the Indigo Disc DLC, it's revealed that the time machine likely sent the professors to alternate realities instead of the actual past and future of their own presence. And yeah, this is some wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, but basically it means that even if they could rebuild their time machine, it'd probably be very hard for them to get back to their own reality. Stuck in a world that you really know nothing about aside from the Pokemon there? Yeah, that doesn't sound too great. Number 4, Rai and Akari. Pokemon Legends Arceus took the Pokemon world by storm because of how different it was compared to the other main series Pokemon games. Trainers Rai or Akari are sent back in time by Arceus, yeah, God himself, to the Hisui region, a land that would eventually be known as Sinnoh. At first, this is a bit of a culture shock given that they went from using cell phones and wearing t-shirts to a pre-industrial version of Japan, but it actually turned out to be a pretty great adventure. They would save the region from imminent danger and catch hundreds of Pokemon, including the gods of the Pokemon world and some never-before-seen species. And all this happens while you become the best member of Galaxy Team and become something of a local legend around Hisui. So what's the problem then? Well, Arceus never sends you back. Yeah, the game ends and that's it. This is just your life now. Our hero is now trapped in a world with no modern comforts whatsoever. Commercial farming hasn't been invented yet. Internet, TV, <laughs> not for a long time. Heck, even antibiotics didn't exist back then. And on top of that, what about Rei and Akari's families? One day they just disappeared. There's gotta be a lot of people wondering where they went who were just never gonna get an answer to their mystery. Plus, both are clearly familiar with Pokemon, which would suggest that they were trainers before they were sent back in time. All their Pokemon partners just lost their trainer one day, and now they're probably just stuck in their Pokeballs for the rest of their lives. So even though Rei and Akari are living their best life, being stuck in the past is still no picnic. Number 3. Ultra Ruin Man As we talked about before, one of the coolest features in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon was the ability to use Nebi to travel through Ultra Wormholes into other universes. And some of the most interesting destinations were the homeworlds of the Ultra Beasts. Sure, some of them are pretty basic, but if you're a fan of pure Lovecraftian horror, look no further than the Ultra Ruin, home to Guzzlord. Now for those of you that don't know, Guzzlord is a horrifying Pokemon with a giant mouth that will never stop eating no matter what. And this world is a cautionary tale of what happens when a Guzzlord gets loose on your planet. The Ultra Ruin is a parallel version of Alola that has been entirely consumed by the Hungry Ultra Beast. And as if having all your resources consumed wasn't bad enough, Guzzlord emits toxins as it goes, poisoning the air and water. And despite this veritable hellscape, there's a dude just hanging out there. He tells us that everyone else has left, and he's the last of his race and he's stranded. And oh yeah, he has to wear this protective suit to not get sick from all the smog. But despite this, he still seems pretty upbeat. That's because the natives on this world actually love Guzzlord for one reason or another, and they see what it's doing as just a normal thing. You know, <laughs> survival of the fittest and all that. Of course, the real irony here is that Guzzlord would eat this guy in a second without even thinking if it was given a chance. So at the end of the day, we have a man trapped on a world with no resources, meaning no clean food, no clean water, and air that makes you sick. 
And all of this is being endured by a man in love with a Pokemon who has no idea that he even exists. Sheesh, Pokemon. <laughs> you got really dark in your old age. Number two, Ghost Girl. Okay, so this entry is less of a character and more of an Easter egg, but don't worry. It's definitely worth number two on this list. Back in Pokemon X and Y, if you go into a specific building in Lumio City and go to the second floor, the lights will flicker and a ghostly girl will appear. She says, no, you're not the one, before turning around and floating away. Who or what this girl is supposed to be has never been revealed. And now, 11 years later, and with brand new Kalos remakes on the way, there is still no indication that we'll ever find out who she is. Fans love to speculate that it's an unused Pokemon event, or some Easter egg buried deep in the game's code, but let's talk about the actual character that we see for a second. Based on how she moves and vanishes, she's clearly a ghost or some kind of spirit, and her entire existence is based on finding one person who, as far as we know, is never showing up. Her spirit could be trapped on the second floor of that random building forever, with no one knowing who she is or who she's looking for. I definitely hope that's not what's in store for me when I die. And number one, Cyrus. Anyone who knows anything about grim outcomes in Pokemon is definitely familiar with Cyrus. The boss of Sinnoh's Team Galactic, he was a true nihilist, with his only goal being the destruction of the entire world so it could be remade with him as its god. By using the powers of Dialga and Palkia, he wanted to open a portal to the Distortion World. And once he got there, he would use the powers of Giratina to bring about his new paradise. And it would have worked too, if it wasn't for just two 10-year-old kids, Lucas and Dawn. Once they defeat Cyrus and capture Giratina, Cyrus would simply wander off into the deepest parts of the Distortion World, never to be seen again. And even though Cyrus did stay behind by choice, his future is no picnic. He's in a world where the laws of physics as he knows them don't even exist. It's a world that is totally alien to him. From what we have seen of the Distortion World, there's no food or any life there besides Giratina. So even though Cyrus was looking forward to some time alone to think, his future is nothing more than thinking about how close he got to success before it was all ripped away from him as he slowly starves to death in total isolation in an alien universe. And on that very happy note, that is my list for the 10 worst fates in the Pokemon universe. Did I miss any? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, remember to like, subscribe, and oh yeah, don't forget to pour one out for the 10 poor souls on our list. But with that being said, this is Blaine signing off for Bridge 4 Games. I hope all of you have a happy, epic, awesome, and amazing day. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.